everybody. My name is Emily Floor. I'm the Education Director for St. John's Riverkeeper. And today we're going to talk about ecosystems, specifically those found in our St. John's River watershed. Some of the key terms in this video are biotic and abiotic factors, photosynthesis, consumer, producer, decomposer, and invasive species. Let's first define the word ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of interacting biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are organisms that are living, like plants, animals, and bacteria. Abiotic factors are environmental components like temperature, minerals in the soil, light, and rain. Together, these make up a community with each playing a different and important role to keep an ecosystem healthy. The needs of a plant or an animal must be met if it is going to survive in an ecosystem. What are the four basic needs of animals and the four basic needs of plants? Great job if you got all of them. Now let's look at how interconnected an ecosystem is. Plants are called producers because they harness energy from sunlight and turn it into chemical energy to make their own food, a process called photosynthesis. The energy from photosynthesis is then passed from organism to organism through the food web. Animals that must rely on the digestion of other organisms to survive are called consumers. Depending on their diet, they're categorized as either herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore. Bacteria are decomposers as they break down dead or decaying organisms. Decomposers play an important role in making an ecosystem a cycle as they return nutrients back to the soil for the producers. Terrestrial and aquatic plants provide oxygen for animals to breathe and take up the carbon dioxide they release. Fun fact, 50% of the oxygen we breathe comes from plants and algae in the water. Ecosystems are complex, and every organism within an ecosystem has adapted to survive. What are some other ways that plants and animals are interconnected through food, water, and habitat? And remember, for an ecosystem to be balanced and healthy, you gotta have many different species of plants and animals living together. When you think of an ecosystem, such as a river, what types of organisms come to mind? Dolphin, alligators, fish, crabs, and birds are obvious answers, but there are many more biotic factors that make up an ecosystem that are worth mentioning. But don't forget about those producers and decomposers, they're very important. In nature, an ecosystem is kept in balance with predator-prey relationships that keep populations of organisms from getting too high. When the balance of an ecosystem is disrupted, organisms cannot thrive and some may even die. Some examples of negative human actions that can tip that balance are things like overfishing, pollution, land development, or removing too many resources like water. Another way humans can have a negative impact are by introducing invasive species. These are living things not naturally found in an ecosystem. Invasive species tend to not have any natural predators, making their population hard to control, and they can outcompete the native species for resources like food and habitat. It's important to remember that not all disruptions are caused by humans. Some happen naturally. So making wise choices to protect our ecosystems will allow all organisms to continue to live and thrive. Thanks for joining me today to discuss the ecosystems of our St. John's River and why it's important to keep it balanced. And we'll see you again on the river soon.